And that's why we're doing this. What is it that was imposed on us? by family, surrounding, school, culture, country, whatever you want. And what is that is our true self? It's a discovery, it's a discovery. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear the recording. Okay, so let's go on the mode of being, maybe you remember better when you're a school age child. So do you remember that better? Yeah. So you're right. But again, this is what Chaya is saying. Yeah, is it something that you really are by choice because this is who you are or something that the situation, the external circumstances yeah. dictate? <coughs> I mean, I'm not like that now, but thank you for sharing that. But maybe that's what happened because of the circumstance, but that's not who you are. So write it down. And when you write down, this is how I was, but it's not my intrinsic, you know, mode of being. This is what the circumstances dictated. Just like we said, you know, the, 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 the teenager who is getting a boyfriend or a girlfriend, they're doing it because of peer pressure. There's a tremendous peer pressure because at that age, they realize that they have to be looking like everybody else. Little kids don't care if they look like everybody else. Little kids go to the supermarket in their Cinderella dress and they think it's okay. Mm -hmm. They don't, they are on the cart and then they are like, you know, with their magic wand and they're fine with their crown on their head. It's a weekday, it's nothing special. They, they want to be that. When they be a teenager, believe me, they're not going to do that. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> huh? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Okay. So now you're figuring out a school age child. What's your mode of being in school? That felt good. That felt good. Like I used to help the teacher. It felt good. It's a lot of mem like going back in time, you know. How was I when I when I was in school? So when you do the teenager, your mode of being as a teenager. So this is a big shift. Teenage is usually a big shift because that's when the time that we realize that other people are looking at us instead of us looking at the world through our own eyes. So as a teenager, what was your mode of being? What you felt in the flow? Did I used to run around in the, in the countryside for myself? I just loved it. I used to go hiking. So here you go. Mm -hmm. So what is this mode of being when you go hiking? She's a nature lover. That's right, nature lover, exactly. And also, you know, using your body, because you can love nature in a different way, but going hiking is really exercising your body too. So movement.
really appreciate you doing this. Let's see if you can find out the mood of being that you were the best, to have the best when you were in your 20s. I was in the flu when I went, I would go shopping. <laughs> my twenties. <laughs> That's when I started making money. So I used my money. I used to go shopping at all the wholesalers in my grandmother's house. And it's like, I would spend the whole morning shopping. It doesn't mean I bought a lot of things, but I tried, I looked, I figured out, compared. That's, that's what I liked. Then I also like teaching, but I was in the flow when I was telling story. So that was my, one of my things, a storyteller. Oh, I was librarian. I loved it. I thought you loved it so much. So librarian does what? I mean, well, it did a lot of things, but I would read to the class. Read? Yeah, read the story. Yeah. Right. So that's like an actor. <laughs> it's, so, it's such a good job. Maybe she so this is what you write. Mm -hmm. At that stage, you were a librarian, but what does the librarian do? Could be librarian is classifying things. Could be librarian is, you know, um, you know, reading a lot so that when people ask them, you know, what is this book about, you know about it. But your, your happiness in being a librarian was reading to the children. Mm -hmm. So it's either sharing or being an actor. So you see, you discover things when you do this, you know? Playfulness, being an actor. What about your mode of being in your thirties and on? When you have these things, you know, um, you know, you have the sweet memories from the childhood or whatever your mother told you. Like for me, I was dancing. For Ilana, I was, you know, she was playing a lot. And to be playful, you know, it's such a, it's such a good thing. And, and these are activities that release you from, from the worry, from the self-judgment, um, you know, and so these are these are the pattern that we see. You know, if you if you have something that you were doing when you were very young, most probably something that really is your true self, because you didn't have a, a time or you know to be shaped by other people yet. So these are your true self modes of being that are where you're in the flow. Now when 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 do you um which activities right now I'd like you to take a little bit of time if you see a pattern if you see a pattern from your mode of being let's say somebody would say you know um talked a lot okay talkative so it's connection and talking that's from when the time i'm little the teacher told me 
You know, you're talking, you're talking, you're talking, you're talking. Um, but that's what something that I always kept. But um, so sometimes I talk to the children, sometimes I talk on the phone, sometimes I talk to people, sometimes I talk to myself and I journal, but this talking is important to me. I'm the talker, okay? But if you are the playful person and you see that you were there at some point and now it stops, ask yourself like, what happened? My true mode of being was to be playful. And now, what would happen if you bring that mode of being in your daily life? Which activity would release you from worry, from self-judgment, from stress? Like I talked to someone today, she says to me, cleaning is my therapy. When she cleans, that's it. But the truth is, there's this purpose in cleaning. It's a physical activity, but there's also a purpose. And you feel good when things are clean, you know? Like when it's spring, or spring cleaning, <laughs> or prison cleaning. cleaning, like you don't need to wash the curtains, but you're taking everything down. You don't need to wash sure. the ceilings. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to do it. But once I started, I got into my mode of cleaning. I was like, okay, I'll go outside and the holes and the windows and everything. Because once I go into that mode, I feel good. I feel good. So which is the mode of being that, you know, you just go and you start doing it. Sometimes it's sewing, sometimes it's reading, sometimes it's just not doing not anything. Sometimes it's going shopping. What is it? What taking care of yourself? Sometimes it's learning. So the question is, what activity do you do which release you from worries, from self-judgment or from stress? Because these activities are the activities that your inner soul is yearning for. That is your true self, your authentic self. But if you have this problem that anything you do, you're always thinking you should be doing something else. Then there's no peace because there's this voice saying no, this, that that this that story. okay so that that's come from a critical voice right if yeah. you're in the middle of doing something and you enjoy it and then you have the voice says you shouldn't be doing it mm -hmm. so sometimes it's true we shouldn't be doing it but sometimes it's not sometimes you you, you, you there's nothing absolutely nothing wrong taking your time to do it yourself but we have this guilt feeling that sometimes they ta take time for ourselves so we we don't we feel like we shouldn't but what if we would be in the flow like we're taking care of ourselves and enjoy it thoroughly how would that feel and enjoy it myself. and enjoy it thoroughly without that voice that tells you you shouldn't be doing this let's say you you want to be playful but then there's a little voice that comes and you shouldn't be playing at your age. You should be studying, something like that. So we want to find the things that are authentic to us without this critical voice, without the self-judgment, without the stress. Oh my gosh, I have to go pick up so-and-so and I have to go to the airport. And without all this, what is it that we, we, you would be feeling in your ideal mode of being. And when do you do it? Um, I learned from somebody recently, it's good to put on music when you do the chores and to dance. So I do that in my class. It's very nice, I look forward to it. So what is this mode of being of dancing with the music? It's just being happy and just being, just enjoying enjoy, enjoyment of um, the moment of 
enjoyment of the moment, but it's also like, do, do you like music? Yeah. You love music. So listening to music, this is like magic for people. So what we want to do, and this is the next stage, how can you bring your favorite mode of being into activities? or into your work day. Like you said, you love music. So cleaning your apartment maybe is not very attractive to you. But when you bring in the music, you're okay doing it. So your inner core, your, your mode of being of enjoying music, the music lover, I would call it, is helping you with your workload. So that's what we want to do. We want to bring now, the work is to bring whatever is your authentic mode of being into your day. So you don't have to change. You don't have to say, well, I don't want to clean and I'm not cleaning. You say, I'm going to clean, but I'm going to bring something to help me. I'm going to bring something that elevates what I'm doing. A very good example, Inanna. Hi, I was just thinking about something. Um, do you remember, like, you know, when you sort out things in the house and you say, okay, this belongs here and you're going to get rid of it and this belongs here and I'm going to do this, I'm going to donate it, and mm -hmm. you sort things out, remember? So what mode of being is that? Organizing. The organizer? Yeah. Okay. So that's one mode of being that you have. You're good at that. Yeah, yeah you're good at that. I hope you have it on your list. <laughs> I didn't, but I'm not saying now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheating a little bit. I'm giving a little <laughs> So, so when you bring that organizer into your life mm -hmm. as a mode of being, because you're good at that, you're in flow when you're organizing. Mm -hmm. It feels good, right? Yeah. And now you have these voices in your mind that says, you shouldn't be doing that. Or, you know, this is not appropriate. You know, that's uh, my problem is when I'm playing Sudoku. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is, Let's say you're playing Sudoku and the voice comes in and says, you should not be playing Sudoku right now. But you are enjoying playing Sudoku. You feel good when you're in that mode, right? Yeah. It's the playful mode. And also it's like brain and you enjoy using your brain. So you totally in mode of being, but you have that critical voice that comes in and says, you shouldn't be doing that. So bring the organizer. Bring the mode of being of the organizer. Said, that voice belongs in the trash. In the trash, <laughs> fine. In the trash, we'll go. There you go. Mm -hmm. So you you helping yourself with your natural mode of being that are true to yourself, and and this this helps you without having to fight. You feel that you want to share something. You don't have to. You don't have to, but did you find a way where you can bring something that you already are, bring it into a situation or something you have to do or anything or your work or whatever, and then using that to help you So I'd like if we can have a few minutes here, um, people sharing, if you want to share. 
Because sometimes, you know, somebody says something and say, oh, I have that too. Or sometimes somebody will describe something and say, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I'll try that. Anybody would like to share? Something other than what I just said about? Yeah, if you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's part of patterns. Do you notice that? If you want to share, if you see a pattern, if you want to share that. I'm not really ready. Okay. Right now. <laughs> okay. Did you see a pattern? From childhood to 10 years old to adult to 10 years ago, did you see a pattern? Um, the thing that can just pop in my mind right now, I felt like I like every day, like now. Um, I'm always feeling that I wasted so much of my life. You know, just the first 30 or 40 years, just I didn't, and I just, I wasn't, in, I, I wasn't from, and I didn't have, you know, I wasn't, um, I, I didn't go to Israel until I was like 27, and, um, you know, I just, I, I just, Wasn't really building a future. So that that's that's what you think about what happened to you mm -hmm. or what you did. But what were the modes of being? What playful? Like, okay. Like just you see distracted. that that was always there. I think I was distracted. Is that you know being distracted and just being not not being focused or not being well when people are playful. They're not really trying to focus. They're trying to have a good time. Right. So you might notice that this is a pattern that when you're young, little, your mother say you're playful. Then when you are in your 20s and 30, whatever, you are still playful and you're having a great time. And this is how it makes you feel good. This is who you are. Now, whatever you're judging now, we're not trying to judge. Mm -hmm. We're trying to see what is your mode of being? Because the mode of being is totally you. You can use it always for good things. Mm -hmm. Like when you are um, in the mode of being of being playful and you read a story to the children as a librarian. I was already, I was already thrown at that point. Yeah, but you, you accessing your mode of being of being playful. Mm -hmm. So your mode of being of being playful was always there. And that's where you see the pattern. So now you're judging yourself. We're not here to judge. Mm -hmm. We're not here to judge. We're trying to figure out ourselves. There's no judgment here. And don't forget that whatever you went through in life is to bring you to the place where you are now. You wouldn't be who you are now without having gone through what you did before. So we're not saying, you know, this is a waste because that brought you to where you are. But this playfulness that you have, how does it come out now? How can you use it now? One thing that comes to mind, and I've been trying not to be, lately I've been trying not to be uh, so rigid and the way I go about doing things, like I'll, I always used to think I had to finish something, finish a task, and now I can leave something and do, go on to something else and then come back to that later. And that's a sense of, I enjoy doing, I'm enjoying doing that now. So. Here you go. Here you go, because your mode of being is to enjoy and to be playful. So now instead of telling yourself, I have to finish this job, I have to finish this work, I can't do anything until I finish and like being the master, the taskmaster of yourself. Right. Now you're saying, okay, let's be playful. I do a little bit, I go somewhere else, I come back and you know? Yes, it's been very satisfying I've been doing this for the past month. 
Great. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, Nana. So more Rikisha, playfulness, Rikisha. more playfulness, more playfulness. Rikisha. Very good. That's wonderful. Yoche, would Rikisha. you like to share something? I think it's interesting when I first came to Miami here, I said to Nora. So I found the theme was Nora's little, all I could think of is I just like, I enjoyed being with my grandmother because I like learning from her. So the theme of learning seemed to be at every age I was and at different times age, there's different things you're interested in, you're learning. So they said, how do you implement it now? I all the time like have earphones and <laughs> I'm learning something. That's have right. Share on, have something going on when I'm working because I do it like with everybody. I always have classes on, so I know I've incorporated that. One thing I find from like doing this exercise is that like, I kind sort of get overwhelmed by how much I'm learning, but I need to take the time to sit down, like really integrate it or to like break it down in pieces or, you know, to enjoy it more than just, just always being that mode of learning, like you're learning, 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 what are you doing with it? Like I have to take time to, you know, do some sort of things forward. Like to, to so how would you incorporate that, that, the, what you seem to say now that your, your mode of being is learning? You learning, you learning, you learning. Okay. So now, when we do that, we don't do with a judgment. We're not judging. You know, I'm learning a lot, but I'm not. I'm not applying it. If you enjoy learning, you just go for it. And you don't have to tell yourself, "Oh, I'm learning, but I'm not putting it into practice enough." If your mode of being is learning and you enjoy it, you just go ahead. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? That's why we said no judgment when we when we figure these things. You know, if you feel happy when you're learning and you're hearing new ideas and you're hearing new things, and it could be anything, like you said, you remember when you had the dance class at your house? So, oh, yeah. you, you know, you, you enjoy learning the steps, you enjoy learning this. It, it, learning is it. So you don't have to say, okay, now I have to learn so that I be productive. <laughs> because your mode of being is a learning mode, is not being in production. So that's why you just let it go, just be in the learning mode. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Chaya. I think it's mainly um, being with little kids. It's been my whole life. I'm still with little kids. So what is this being with little kids? What kind of mode is that? Um, I think it's giving. Giving. Teaching. Teaching. Um, caring. Caring. Yeah. And when you care for someone, you feel in the flow. Yeah. Well, that wow. that that is caring for people. Yeah, it's very special. That is caring for people. So you, your activity is different. Let's say if you're holding your grandchildren, you're caring for them. That's one activity is holding the grandchildren, but the mode of being is caring. So when you are <laughs> collecting money to help people in need, that's caring also, but the activity is different. Right. So that mode of being is what you keep with you, okay? That's beautiful, really beautiful. So um, this is like one good indicator that it gives you a greater joy and it gives you a sense of purpose. When you're playful, when you are learning, when you are caring, this is how you really, you know, at your best. So now would I like to um, do a little, um, a little thing right now. I'd like you to take a little bit of a few minutes to see where you can take this and plug it into other activities or moments in, of your life. because it will create more meaning. 
if learning is a state that you always want to feel in, feel like you're learning all the time. So whatever you're doing, you want to be learning. Whether it's like somebody wants to be learning, like, you know, you go to the airport, so you want to learn. How do you weigh this? And, you know, how do you figure out? And who taught, you know, who tells you to do this? Like, you're always collecting, you know, learning information, right? So I want you to think, where, where can you take this mode of being that is truly yours? And there's not necessarily just one. And how can you take it in into different activities or moments of your life? I'm just a little bit confused. Like, what is the art? So, you know, I said that my mode of being when I was a child was playful, but like, I don't think that's such a constructive way to. We're not judging. Oh. Being constructive. Constructive way. No, no, we're not judging here. We're not judging. Well, like, should I, like, shall I play? Shall I enjoy myself? Shall I not enjoy myself? You can take it as a game. Mm -hmm. And then you're, I mean, I don't know if that's what you own me. Can I attach the Instead of just a job and you're doing these, it could be a way for No, I, I enjoy it. I do enjoy it. In other words, you have this playfulness and it's your mode of being. And now you have this critical voice as well. When you're playing, you're not being constructive. Mm -hmm. Guess what? If you're in your mode of being, you're being the most constructive you can be because you're following your soul. Your soul? Yeah. In other words, you are being who you need to be. What more constructive is there than that? That's why if you say, for example, you know, like I'm learning, but <laughs> this but is the critical voice, you know? So we're not doing the critical voice. If you love to learn, you're in the flow and you're learning, you learn. That's why I said, like, you know, when you were little, that's what we went into when you were little, because when you were little, the critical voice was not there yet. Maybe. <laughs> no, we're not. Thank you. I think my critical was that there's a poor. When kids are playing, when kids are little, they don't listen to the parents' criticism. They don't listen. They do whatever they feel like doing. That's why you keep repeating them. Come back and wash your hands. They're dirty. They don't care about being clean. They care about playing, you know? So that, that's why we go back to how you were when you were little, because that mode of being is truly part of you really deep. And so if you were playful, you were playful. Now you have all this baggage tells you, oh, playful, but you know, you're not being constructive when you're playful. You're being constructive if you follow your soul. That's interesting. It's like not suppressing it. Is that not suppressing it or? intrinsic qualities and characters that's right that's what we said when you are in your mode of being that is the most beneficial for you mm -hmm. um you elevate everything else that you do in life and instead of saying oh i should be more busy doing something i should be i shouldn't be playing right now i shouldn't uh, and then you push yourself down push yourself down but it's not helping you oh that's interesting it's not helping you. You're just pushing yourself down. At some point, it's going to backfire. But when you take something that is good and you elevate it and you make it even more and you enjoy it and you're flowing with it, there's nothing to fight. So I just want to take a few minutes now to, um, to um, each one of you. I would like you to close your eyes and Take time to feel each one of you, your mode of being and how it energizes you to have time in your life in this authentic mode of being. 
when you follow your soul. And see also how it benefits other people around you. And allow yourself to be supported by your inner authenticity and truth. Allow your whole self to be supported by it. Don't push it aside, don't criticize it. You be supported by this mode of being. Notice what reminds you to value your authentic mode of being. What are the things that help you? Little reminds you to keep track of making sure you, you be in that state. <clears throat> and perhaps the words, a little sentence, or a color that is associated with that mode of being or a symbol, or a touch. Anything that allows yourself the freedom to experience this mode of being every day. And see yourself the next day, the, the coming week, using that mode of being to be there for you as a support, to be recognized as your mode of being that is true and flowing, to be fully embraced as something of great value and importance. and see how it's gonna enhance your life. And it's gonna radiate from your inner being to the activities that you do, to the thoughts you have, to the decisions you make, and how it radiates also, because you feel good about being in flow, how it radiates to the people around you. It gives you more power in a natural way, in a very grounded and very organic manner. And make a little bit of a commitment to use that mode of being in the coming week. Where are you going to use it? Where you're gonna feel it. And you can write yourself your commitment. See it unfold. Integrating your true self into the events of the interactions that you have. How is this going to happen this week? Feel the power you have now to activate your discovery of tonight into your coming week. And write yourself a note and your commitment. And if you thought about a gesture or if you thought about a color, write down the color that you thought about that this mode of being makes you think of. Or if you have a gesture,
I want to thank you very, very, very much. My mode of being now is sleeping, mode of being, <laughs> resting, taking care of yourself. You should know when you're a caring person, the first person you should care about is yourself. So that's great. It's good when you're able to relax after all this after a long day. It's wonderful, wonderful. So now we'll have a little bit of a social time together. If you want to stay or if you're in a rush, you can go. But um, I want to thank you very much for doing this work. I think um, you came up with something that maybe, did you expect any of that? Did you expect to discover this? Yeah, it is very good. Yeah. <laughs> Extremely helpful. Extremely <laughs> helpful. Yeah, because very often we just, you know, don't allow ourselves to feel that. And if we just allow it because this is who we are, then we feel liberated. Yeah. And it helps us and it helps other people. Definitely. All right. The time is ringing now. Thank you so much. Did you, did you drive it? Yeah.